Welcome to Electron Online, and in this next set of videos, we're going to talk about assets and bases. We're going to go fundamentally through the properties of what assets and bases are, and then also give us the ability to work with assets and bases, have reactions with assets and bases, and see what they can do and how to calculate the pH and so forth. So a whole set of videos here on assets and bases. So starting out with the fundamentals, the general properties. What are assets and what are bases? Well, usually they're aqueous solutions. And to understand the difference between them, let's go through some of the properties. For one thing, acids have a sour taste. Now, I would recommend that you typically do not put an acid in your mouth. Some acids will literally destroy the inside of your mouth when you put them in your mouth. But there's some mild acids, for example, lemon juice. If you taste lemons, they have a sour taste. So therefore, lemon juice is an acidic uh, substance. So we can say that is an acid. Then we have bitter taste, usually bitter taste. Uh, I'm sorry, then we have bases. And uh, bases, they tend to have a bitter taste, and typically they have a salt uh, associated with, uh, ba with bases. And so, again, some substances you could put in your mouth and you, you get this bitter taste. So that's one of the ways in which you can differentiate between acids and bases. Okay, the second one is that we have certain dyes that we can use on paper, so like litmus paper, and we can test acids and bases with litmus paper. It turns out litmus paper tests whether or not you're dealing with an acid or you're dealing with a base. If you dunk a litmus paper into an acid, the litmus paper will turn red, and if you dunk it into a base, then it will turn blue. So that's one good way in indicating whether or not you're dealing with an acid or a base. The third property uh, that we'll look at is what it does when you put an acid and base in water. And so what happens is when you put an acid in water, it yields an excess of hydrogen ions and they're positively charged. So whenever you put an acid into water, you'll have more hydrogen ions in the water than you did before you put the acid in there. In opposition to that, when you put a base in water, it will yield an excess of the hydroxide ion, OH minus. And so when you put a base in water, you'll have more hydroxide ions than you did before you put the base in water. So that's another way in which you can differentiate between acids and bases. Now it turns out we have a, a means of mathematically measuring the concentration of the hydroxide ion or the um, hydrogen ion in the in the solution into which we put an acid or base. And so it turns out when you put an acid in the water solution, you'll have more hydrogen ions. And so therefore we can say that the pH, which is a measure of how many hydrogen ions are in the solution, is less than seven. The smaller the number, the greater the number of hydrogen ions in the solution. So the more acidic the solution becomes. On the other hand, if you're dealing with a base, the measure of that, of course, will be then greater than 7 because a greater number means less hydrogen ions in the solution. And so since, in, the, in essence, a base takes hydrogen ions out of the solution and puts hydroxide ions, OH minus, into the solution, the amount of hydrogen ions in the solution gets to be lower, so therefore the pH goes up. So the pH is simply a measure of the number of hydrogen ions in the solution. Lots of hydrogen ions, low pH, few hydrogen ions, high pH, and we'll get into the details of how we do that and what that number actually means. Finally, another way of looking at acid and bases is that they're either a proton donor or a proton acceptor. For example, when you put acid in a solution, it will liberate hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are basically protons, and so therefore it donates protons into the solution. On the other hand, a base will actually take those hydrogen ions and, uh, and enable the the hydroxide ions to be liberated. So therefore we say that a base is a proton acceptor. It will take those hydrogen ions out of the solution, utilize them, and put hydroxide ions into the solution as a result of that, or an excess of hydroxide ions as a result. So what are some examples of acids and bases? Well, we'll go into many more examples later on, but a simple example here is hydrochloric acid, HCl. When you put hydrochloric acid into an aqueous solution, it will separate, the hydrogen and the chlorine atoms will typically separate, and therefore, as a result, you'll dump a lot of hydrogen ions into the solution, therefore lowering the pH and making the solution more acidic. That's why we call hydro hydrochloric acid an acid. On a base, for example, we have sodium, sodium hydroxide. Of course, there's the hydroxide that kind of gives it away. But if you put sodium hydroxide into the solution, what you find is that they will separate. Sodium will then be on its own as a positive ion, and the hydroxide ion will now be there in excess because for every sodium hydroxide molecule, then when they separate, you add an additional hydroxide ion into the solution. Therefore, 
when you have an excess of, sodium, of hydroxide ions in the solution, pH goes up, it becomes a basic solution. It all comes down to the interesting properties of water. For example, when you have a water molecule, it turns out that a small percentage of water in water molecules will separate and turn into a hydrogen and a hydroxide ion. Well, that's not exactly what happens, but at least they, will do, they do separate, and then the, hydro, the, the hydrogen ion will then join in with a water molecule and form an H3O molecule, which is positively charged. And we'll get into the details of that later. But at least you can see that water typically will separate to a very, very small percentage, it's a minute percentage, into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And so, at, at first, water will then have what we call a neutral stains in that the pH will be exactly 7 for, for, uh, uh, for water and, um, and that will mean that you have an equal number of these two and so when you add additional hydrogen ions you'll have more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions that will make it a, an acid and if you add hydroxide ions then you'll have more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions and that will make it a base so it will, it will shift the balance to one side or the other Shift it more to the hydrogen ion, you'll have an acid. Shift it more to the hydroxide ion, you'll have a base. And that will give you a pretty good picture of what the differences are between acids and bases. Now that you know that, we'll go to the next videos and start utilizing that information, that knowledge.